Energy Toss Radio. Radio. Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to Energy Toss Radio Show, Powerful Women segment. I am your host, Trista Sunshine Anderson, and today, today will be an extraordinary inspirational day. So thank you all for joining me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So this show is all about celebrating our culture, our love, our power, our magic, And most importantly, we will always do it our way. So I use this platform to uplift and empower all women. And today's episode will be a prime example of just that. So before we dive into our amazing show, I'd like to take a moment to invite our wonderful, beautiful listeners to explore more about our show and any upcoming events. So you can find us on Linktree at Energy Toss Network, LLC, where you'll find all things Energy Toss. So please make sure you go out there to Linktree. Like I say, follow, 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 share, share, share. And for those who want to connect with me personally, I'm on all social media platforms as Sunshine, that's S-U-N-S-H-Y-N-E, Anderson. So that's Instagram and Facebook. And also, if you would like to donate to Energy Toss Network, you could do so at dollar sign suns, S-U-N-S, energy. And also, please, 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 we're always accepting sponsorships. So today, today, I'm getting ready to get started so I can introduce you to this amazing person. So before I do that, I'm going to tell you a little bit about that person. So my guest today, she lives by the motto of let your light shine. She is the CEO of Urban Light Production Incorporation, national and international poet, author, singer, and community leader, as well as the recipient of several awards, including the National Poetry Awards Christian Spoken Word Artist of the Year. She was also selected by the National Urban League to write and recite a poem to honor civil rights leader, Dr. Reverend Dr. Joseph E. Lowry. She also is the author of several poems, books, and in 2011, she self-published her novel and it's titled The Sisterhood of Insanity. She also is featured on national radio shows with Steve Harvey, Michael Bazin, and she's open for R&B artist Angie Stone. Her single, Calling My Name, it has held the number one spot on Reverb Nation for several weeks and, and won her the 2014 Neo Soul Gospel Artist of the Year. She's the founder of Artists Against Violence Foundation, and that's an Atlanta-based nonprofit organization. Urban Light earned a Master of Divinity from the Interdenominational Theological Center, a Bachelor of Arts from Hampton University, and she's a member of Phi Alpha Data Law Fraternity. She has served our country in the United States Army and is a proud mother of Daryl and Crystal. So I am getting ready to introduce to you none other than Miss Juanita Vinson, a.k.a. Urban Light, And this bad mama Gemma is from Detroit. So you guys give me a virtual hand clap, a little pop pop while I bring this beauty on. Hey girl, hey. Thank you, thank you so much. Oh my goodness, you made me sound like a celebrity superstar. (laughs) Yes, tell them who you are. I told them who you are. You're gonna tell them who you are too. You are. You are all things amazing. Oh Thank my goodness. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate the opportunity. I really do. 
you are more than welcome. I know I gave that bio and, and girl, you have done some amazing things, but I also want to give you the opportunity to tell our beautiful listeners who and what is Urban Light. Well, I just feel like I am a being in this world that God created to spread positivity and good energy. I um I believe, I, I truly do believe in the model of letting your light shine. So in between the dash of the time that you are born and the time that you leave this earth, I just believe that I have been put on this earth to share each and every positive gift that I have, whether it is through a song, whether it's through a poem, whether it's through inspiration, mentoring, whatever it is that it is that I am meant to do, that is who um, Urban Light is. I am the person that is meant to do what I have been created that only I can do, just like each one of us has our own particular gift. And mine is just to shine the light of positivity. Oh, that is just, that's beautiful. What was your purpose and how have you helped others understand like their purpose? I've, I've come to understand that I am a healer and it is, it's really hard. It's hard being a healer because when you are a healer, you attract people that are hurting. Mm -hmm. And I am, my purpose is to heal the hurting through, through words of creativity. So whether it is me saying the poem, good black men, and a brother telling me after I've done the performance, you know, no one has ever told me, no woman has ever said to me that I was good. That is a part of what it is that I, that my purpose is to do. It is to heal the hurting. And I remember when I wrote my first novel, I, I soon began doing writing workshops because I used to have people come to me one by one and say, how do, how do I write my story? How do I, you know, I've always wanted to write a book. So I started creating writing workshops and I started mentoring people on how to write their book and how to write their story. And the bottom line is just do it. If you are a writer and you want to write your story, you want to write your book, my goal for them was just to pull out of them what their purpose is and just to have them to understand it and to just do it. Just like, you know, that the slogan of that particular shoe company, just do it. <laughs> so that is my purpose. <laughs> I'm not giving them no shine. I'm not going to say their name, but you know who it is. Just do it. Whatever your purpose is, that was my purpose. My purpose was pulling out of them what their purpose was because each one of us has a purpose. No one has been created or put on this earth to do nothing. Everyone has a purpose. And sometimes we get down and we feel as though there's mm -hmm. nothing that I have, I'm meant to do. But this is what I have inspired people to do. This is, this is how I found out what my purpose is. I was watching Dr. Dennis Kimbrough and he was on Tavis Smiley that used to have this BET late night show. You remember that news show yes. that Tavis used to do? Uh -huh. And so he said, he put it like this. He said, think of that thing that you would do every day that no one would have to pay you for. That is what it is that you're meant to do. And so when I look back over my life, I was like, wow, I have been writing ever since I've been a little girl. And so then I realized that it was writing. When I went through my most painful time of my life, I picked up the pen. And when I put that pen to the paper, I began to write and I began to feel this feeling as if, wow, this is this is exhilarating for me. What your purpose does is sometimes it is found within your most painful time. But you pick that up and you've been given that gift. You've been given that purpose to get you through whatever the hardest time in your life is that you're going through. And that's how I found poetry. That's how I found that artistry and that creativity. And so when I talk to people and, I, and they say, oh, you've been an inspiration to me. How do I figure this out? That is what I tell them. Think of that thing that you've always done, whether some of us have been taking care of children all of our lives. You're supposed to open up a daycare center. Some yes. of us have been cooking all of our lives. Maybe you're supposed to open up a business. So the yes. other things are going to come into play, right? And mm -hmm. what you look back over your life and you think to yourself, you know what? When I was going through my divorce and I baked them 10 pies for people and I couldn't eat them all. And then I gave them all to the community. <laughs> then you Get figure out. Bacon. That's what I'm supposed to be doing. Because through sometimes through your most painful times of your life, 
you figure out your purpose. Your purpose sometimes comes through that pain and then it propels you into doing what it is that you're supposed to do all along. And do people receive that? Because some, sometimes, you know, you, you can tell a person that they're amazing and that they can do all things possible. Do they receive it well when, when, you, when you talk to them? I, I use a sense of discernment okay. in speaking to people. When, when I do workshops and things like that, people are, are paying to come or, or they're coming because of the fact that they, they feel led to come. So they're open to receive whatever is being said. Um, but if there's just people that I'm walking into or people in my circle or things like that, you have to discern, you know, sometimes what you say and who you say it to. So everybody isn't always receiving of everything. But then again, everything is not meant for everybody. You got that right. Mm. So let's talk about positive lyricism. Mm. So, and why it's why it's important. Ooh, sis. All these new age, you know, rappers coming out and lyricists. Mm. Lyricists. Do we really call them lyricists? Like, what is it? Lyricists. I'm sorry, I can't. I, I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't because. What I, it has been my experience, and this is just my opinion, and it may not be but worth two cents. But what I have seen is that the people who are being pushed to the forefront with all of these very extremely explicit, negative, almost pornographic lyrics oh, and right. lyricism, they're being pushed by people who do not look like us from our community. And there are people who are representing us that are they're, they're you know, they represent the skin that we in, but they don't represent us, especially the women. As a black woman, I am appalled at some of the the lyricism and some of the quote unquote um, things that are being called music that are being put out there. You know, I, I grew up in old school. I grew up with MC Light, Queen Latifah. You know, I'm I listen to Ciroc. I listen to I listen to some real artists that put the pen to the paper and they really doing lyricism. It is extremely important, especially now, because it seems as though the negative is getting so much voice and so much shine. All and right. those of us that are speaking positive, that are speaking about love and relationships, that are speaking about raising our children, that are speaking about being, you know, chaste women, virtuous women, you know, who ain't taking it all off, that are a little bit more conservative, that are strong and powerful from the inside out. You don't have to see everything from the outside to know just how powerful and beautiful I am. Mm -hmm. Those of us, it seems as if our voices are not being heard, but we're still out there. And so we have to continue to speak and have platforms like these. And I so appreciate your platform, sis, because mm -hmm. it's platforms like these that put the message out that there is still positivity, that there are still those of us who are speaking to inspire, uplift and create beautiful works that are that are still, you know, Telling our children, you don't have to do all of that to be all of that. You just don't. You are all that and a bag of chips and, and <laughs> you are beautiful just the way you are. If you don't show nothing but your face, you are exceptional and awesome. You know, so you don't have to do all of those things, especially with the young ladies. Yes. As a grown, grown woman speaking to the young ladies and seeing that they're they're looking up to. The, strip the strippers and prostitution culture. Correct. And when I was growing up, that was something that was shunned. And you keep your personal business in your personal business. You don't tell everybody about everything that you do sexually and, and how good it is and how, how it is, is and how wet it is and, and what you sticking your tongue in and all that. You just didn't. And it seems as though the perverse, the more perverse the more promoted, especially in our community. Correct. Yeah. So Malcolm X said it? that if you want to see or if you want to understand the, um, the level of the community, I, it's not verbatim, but he said, if you want to gauge the, the people, look at their women. Yes. And so when we look at our women, 
the ones that are getting all the shine. Mm -hmm. We have a long way to go and a lot of work to do. And, and when you look back at it 10, 15 years from now, or your kids get old enough and they look back at it, is it is it what you want to represent? Like you said, is that your why? Is that your purpose? Is that your dash? Like, mm. is, is that the dash? Is that what you want to, to leave behind? And like you said, you had the, the MC Lights and the Queen Latifah talking about powerful women and powerful Black women and mm -hmm. my sisters. And like you said, the Angie Stones, all of these people. Yes. But now, what are we, what are we, what are we promoting? You know, we really need to be careful about that because a lot of us, our hearts was dropping when they said that the Freaknik documentary was coming out. <laughs> And we didn't we didn't have that social media the way that they did now. But a lot of us was like, oh, we in church now. We, you know, pastors and reverends and deacons and, you know, we CEOs and all that other kind of stuff. When you're young, you don't think about that. Right. You don't think about that. But now. Now it, they it is so, so funny. I think I was watching the clips. Was it the was it the. I think it was on Instagram. I think it was married to medicine. Like some of them, you saw Dr. Simone and her husband, Cecil at Freak Me. And you looking like, we didn't have this footage. We didn't have iPhones and, and, and Samsung. Who, who video record? See, exactly. It was all in the plan. We could go back to school, go back to church, whatever. And nobody know the difference. But now, now it's all out there. And it's like, we have to, you know, I I am spiritual. I, I believe mm -hmm. in God. God is, is over my life. And there is a text, a scripture in the Bible that says that the older women are supposed to teach the younger women. Correct. I, I, I have a daughter that's 19 years old, and I have always wanted to be that example for her. And so it's a situation now where it is, I don't think that a lot of the younger women are thinking about the future. You know, when you're in your 40s and 50s, when you look yeah. back over your life and you're like, God, I, you have to think about those things. Because when you have daughters, are these things that you want your daughters to emulate? Are these things that you want your daughter to do? And for the men, when you when you treat these women a certain way, when you have daughters and they're grown, do you want men treating your daughter okay. the way that you're treating these women? So all of this, it goes all in a circle. And my thing, my message, I just put out a single, 4424, called, called uh, So Right. And the, the, the lyrics say, I love you, you love me, loving is so right. If we infuse more love into the world, if we really love each other, first, it begins with us loving ourselves. Correct. And I think that's that's a huge part of the issue, especially with us as black women, the way that we see ourselves, because we've been so um, degraded. We've been we've been we've been so torn down by society. Everybody emulates us and everybody want to be us until it's time to be us. You know, everybody want to be a black woman. Come on, until it's time to be a black woman. You don't go through the things that I go through, but you want to be who I am and look like I look and do what I do. But you don't want to go through what I had to go through in order to be what I am. And see, okay. that's the thing. We have got to, we've got to love ourselves for who and what we are with all of our flaws and all of our beauty. We have to love all of it and understand that once we love ourselves, then we're able to put that love into the world. We're able to love other people. There won't be so much negativity. There won't be so much degradation. There won't be I won't demean myself. I won't lower myself. I won't lower my standard on the internet because I'm trying to get likes and clicks. Right. You know? Because we have to demand respect. Like you said, we have to demand respect. We want the black man or just the man period to respect us. We have to respect ourselves and we have to demand that respect. Um, and, and I a hundred percent agree. So I know we talked about, you said, um, I think you made a comment. You said you were very spiritual. So what does, what role does spiritualism have just in, in, in your mission and the work that you do? 
God is the head of my life. Everything that I do, I pray before I do it. I pray in the morning. Um, you know, tomorrow I'm taken off from social media and everything else because of the solar eclipse. And the eclipse means transformation and and all of this. And I want to elevate. I want to go to the next level. And so spiritually, I want to go to the next level. I believe that I've been put in this world to love on people. Again, there are a lot of people in this world that are hurting. There are a lot of people that are in need of healing. And I call myself the wounded healer because a lot of people see, you know, the glory, but they don't know my story. Hmm. And if they only understood and knew in order to have this much peace, you've got to go through a whole lot of chaos. And in going through that chaos, I didn't make a permanent decision of, of suicide and all those other kind of things because I had God in my life. And I knew I had a greater purpose. I knew that there was something for me to do. And understanding your purpose, you say to yourself, OK, you got to also go to the creator that created you in order to know what you were created to do. Mm. So I had to go. I had to. find. You know, it's like, you know, people are like, well, what am I supposed to do? What am I? What am I here for? What's my purpose and things like that? And they take their lives because they don't understand the mm. value of who they are and that this creator that created you, created you for a purpose. You're not just here for nothing. You're here for something. And in order to be a healer, you've had to go through and get some scars. You've had to go on the battlefield. You've had to go through some stuff, but that's the reason why that you've had to go through everything that you've gone through because of the fact that you were meant to get through it and be able to reach back and say, this is how I got through the hell that I went through. Hmm. Say that. I mean, I got to this piece because my life was chaotic and I had to go through hell to get through it. So everything that you're going through, if you living in rats and roaches, if if you ain't got no money, you didn't been on welfare, you didn't been homeless, you've been sleeping in your car. I got you. You've been a single parent. You've been a teen mom. You've been through this. You've been through that. You've been your parents was on drugs. I got you. I understand. You come from the ghetto. You done. All of those things are things that I had to go through in order to be able to say to you, you can do it, sis. If I did it, you can do it. Because and, and God that loves me, loves you too. Correct. And I don't know if you um, watch. So Shannon Sharp, he has his little podcast. He has his podcast. Hey, Club Shay, Shay, Club Shay, Shay. Shay. <laughs> <laughs> so he had um, Gorilla. She was on there. I, um, the other day, I guess. So I saw a clip or whatever. And mm -hmm. she talked about how, and some people, like you say, are shameful to talk about their story and what got them to where they're at. She talked about some of the things you just said. I grew up with rats and roaches. I grew up where we slept on an air mattress. It was several of us. The girls slept in one room. The boys slept in one room. So I was grateful to, to move with my dad or a girl live with my dad in the hotel because that was the first time I had a bed. So, so just, just listening to, you know, her being vulnerable in that, just, just being vulnerable because like you say, the girls nowadays, you know, they're all about, like you said, the likes, the comments, the, how I look and this and the, that, and they never talk about what got them there or you know, what led them there, but I appreciate her for being vulnerable, not saying I just agree with, with all the music and the antics and stuff like that, but she was vulnerable enough to say, hey, I've had rats and roaches. My family was X, Y, Z, but this is what got me here, and this is why I can talk about what I talk about today, because this is how, you know, this is what I grew up in. So like you say, being vulnerable, like talk about what got you here, um, and sometimes that can help the sister next to you. Yes, exactly. Because they, you know, I wear some very expensive shoes now. <laughs> but there was a time I didn't have any. Hmm. See, that's metaphoric. I'm not just talking about shoe shoes. You know what I mean? And a lot of people want to wear Christian Louboutins, but they don't understand just how expensive they are. Right. I appreciate I, I saw a clip of, of her um, interview. I can appreciate that. We all have a story. Mm -hmm. I would just say this to a lot of younger women, a lot of, because I can only speak to women for mm -hmm. our experiences. 
And I think for a lot of people, especially for those of us who grow up in that type of oppression, we have to be careful because every blessing is not from above. And what I, it has been my experience, what I see is that it seemingly are a lot of people who are selling their soul in order to get the things that they have, um, the fame that they have. And they're not understanding that, you know, yeah, every, it looks real good now. It looks like a blessing, but it's not. Because it okay. comes at a price. It comes at a price of, okay, well, just take off a little bit. And then you take off a little bit. And then, well, well, you know, I just need you to change this. And then you change that. Well, just insert this into your lyrics instead of that. And then you put that in your lyrics. And then the next thing you know, you full-blown 100% gone. You, are, you don't even look like you looked when you first <laughs> came on the scene. You came on the scene that. and it was all about lyricism. I know there's one particular rapper, female rapper, that I absolutely, when she first came on the scene, she was in Atlanta. She was a teenage star. And um, a certain, um, a certain, you know, producer that produced a lot of young people found her. And she came on the scene and it was all about her lyricism because she actually won the show because of her lyricism. And then she changed her name. And then after she changed her name, she changed her appearance. And it seemed though she went from, you know, to it was more and more taken off. And it was more and more sexier and sexier and sexier. And to the point where it's just like, dang. And then her lyrics completely changed. Correct. So we have to be careful because Mm -hmm. of the fact that in this world, there's, there's, you know, evil, there's people and, and evil is very subtle. It doesn't come full blown at you saying I'm evil. It just okay. comes very, very subtle. And that's, those are some of the things that we who have been through those things. I mean, I've had a lot of different opportunities thrown at me, but I don't take every opportunity because every opportunity is not an opportunity. Hmm. And if I got to sell my soul in order to get it, I don't want it. You can have it. Correct. Because I don't want it. At the age they're at, the next 10, 15, 20, 30 years, that's going to be played out. We're going to be on to the next. They're, because it's pop, they're popping up left and right. They're popping up left and right. So you always got somebody that's coming up that a little bit more prettier that's going to go get their body done. It's going to be a little bit more better. And like I said, we, we're going to sell our soul more and more and more. So there's mm-hmm. always going to be somebody out there that's going to be better than the next and they're just getting replaced replaced and place but then when you look back you like I sold my like I sold my soul like and mm-hmm. I and I think about um black china mm-hmm. how she went back and, and and removed all of this cosmetic the cosmetic things that that she's done I think she said she had these demonic tattoos like all of this stuff because she I guess she woke up one day and realized that I want to be better. I want to be different. I want to be, I want to be back to myself. <laughs> exactly. And she did that. I remember um, back in the day. So, you know, I, I'm like that meme to say I'm old. I don't, I don't look my age. I fool myself. But back in the day, it was Vanity. Vanity 6, the, the group, the girl group, <laughs> Vanity 6. And the lead singer, her name was Denise Williams at Vanity. And Vanity said, you know, I sold my soul. And I want to get back to God. And she went back. She became, I think she became like a pastor or something like that before she, um, before she died or whatever. But she just talked about it and talked about the industry. And so many people, it's not just the music industry. It is, it's media. It's a lot of media because, you know, that's the way that, that you have to, that you take in stuff. You got to be very careful about what it is that you take in. I'm very careful about what it is that I put in my body. I'm very careful about what I see. I'm very careful about what I listen to because all those things have a direct effect on us. It has a direct effect on our spirit. It has a direct effect on our soul. And so sometimes if you watch something or if you listen to something on the radio or you listen to a certain song, 
it makes you feel really sad. It makes you feel down. And then there are some songs because of the frequencies that make you feel like you want to go out here and just beat somebody down. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, it's some songs. Now, when I'm at the gym, I will say, rest in peace, DMX. I will listen to me some DMX. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just one of them kind of things because it's a heightness in it. So we have to be very careful because, again, there are forces that do not look like us that are pushing mm-hmm. this propaganda and propaganda is a powerful thing it is a powerful tool and it is being pushed by people who do not look like us but it's being pushed into our community and if we understand going back to that spiritualism our bodies are what 75 percent, 70 percent water and so there's a certain vibration that we work on there's a certain frequency that we work on when you talk about music there's energy within like this is energy toss radio there's yeah. energy so if you're putting energy. positive energy out there then the vibrations in your body it feels that positivity and it mm-hmm. makes you just want to smile and laugh and dance and go out and create and do things that are good and love and all those other kind of things but then again the opposite is the same if you're putting things that are negative evil and all those those getting to us as a people as well and it makes us want to go out and kill each other and call each other the n word and b word and fight and and do destructive things and just have sex with anybody and leave them and do this and do that it is all about energy so we as a people my purpose what i am here to do is to make sure that i infuse as much light positivity and love i'm a love on you until you sick of me i'm a love on you i'm a put light out into this world because you can't dim my light because martin luther king said that darkness cannot overcome darkness only light can do that hate cannot overcome hate only love can do that so i'm gonna right. put as much love and light into this world till you sick of me and you can try, but I'm I'm protected. So, you know, you can try to throw them evil, fiery darts at me all you want to. But I'm going to love on my sisters. I'm going to tell them that they're beautiful. I'm going to uplift them. I'm going to put positivity into them. I'm going to love on my brothers. I'm going to tell them that they are amazing. I'm going to tell them they're good. I'm going to tell them they're strong. I'm going to say all of those things because that's what my purpose is. And then I'm going to tell you and then hopefully you'll pay it forward. And then you'll turn around and tell somebody else. And if I love on you and then you love on somebody else, then we can love on each other. And then as a community, we're uplifted. And we need more of you in the world. So <laughs> our time, I'm so sad. Our time is coming to an end. But before, before I end this show, I know you told me you were this lyricist. <laughs> so I'll give you the opportunity. If you have a piece that you want to, that you want to go over today, please do so for the audience. I know they want to hear it. Absolutely. I used to be that chick. See, I wake up in the morning eating man egg sandwiches. I go to take a shower and I pull the shower curtain back and the tub is full of roaches. I mix up powdered eggs and government cheese in order to make a meal. I belong to the poor, the broke, the busted and disgusted. So at school, I get free lunch for my stomach to get filled. See, my daddy died. He left us no money and no will. Nova lampshade. I found out at the funeral that Pops had three kids from across the street with the lady he made. Anger, confusion. See, I'm a product of the ghetto. I got sick and tired of being sick and tired, so I started slinging yayo. I used to be that chick. See, I used to be that chick that would run down to the free clinic in order to get rid of a seed, get dressed, go out to the club in hopes to find another brother to breed with. I was at the club knocking back Jose Cuervos in the back of my throat like a joke. In one hand, I had Hennessy. The other, I had Weefa and was snorting coke. You see, I used to be that chick that used to steal. I would help my grandmama to pay her bills. I would bill collector name erase, my name replace. See, during that time, it was hard to trace. She called me up and say, baby girl, I must be going crazy. They didn't turn the electricity out. She thought it was a medication, but I knew what the real deal was about. You see, I used to be that chick that would cut your neck with the blade that I would keep in my mouth. Until my mama decided to send this ruthless chick to the dirty south. You see, I met up with this other used to be that chick. She told me stories how she used to trick. We talked about how she swung on poles. And to look at her, you never think she was a retired H.O. She said, I'm going to introduce you to a man that's going to love you. And he ain't going to judge. 
I said, show me where the brother is. She said, I'm going to take you where the brother was. She tried to take me to church. Y'all know the house with the T on the top. I said, girl, stop. Because they judge and don't love. Used to be them chicks recently moved to the dirty south. But then I went to sleep and I had this dream. See, I was speaking before millions, but I wasn't saying anything. I was making a whole lot of money, but I wasn't saying anything. I was wearing a whole lot of bling bling, but I wasn't. And then I woke up from my dream. See, I was seeing things like I had never been seen. No longer did I want to sling yayo. Yeah, yeah. No longer did I want to be an H.O. I went back and I asked for forgiveness from my grandmama because out of my life, God took out all of the drama. So now I can profoundly say to thee, the poet urban light, I ain't that chick I used to be. Because I know I've been changed. You see that I know I've been changed. You know that I know I've been changed. You see the angels in heaven done sign my name. I used to be that chick. Thank you. Well, I think that is it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you. much for having Thank me. You. To you, mwah, mwah. I love you so yes. much. Thank you, my before sister. You, before you go, tell the viewers how they can find you. What's your next move? What's upcoming? Because they definitely need to follow you. Absolutely. I am on all social media at Urban Light. It's U-R-B-A-N-L-I-G-H-T-P-O-E-T. -E Urban Light Poet on all social media. I just released my new single, So Right. It is on all music streaming platforms. Y'all can go to Spotify. Y'all can go to Apple Music, Amazon, Pandora, whatever you listen to music on and download So Right. You can even say to Alexa, hey, Alexa, play So Right by Urban Light and she'll play it for you. So I need for y'all to make sure that y'all listen to my music and that y'all hit me up and just say that you listen to me on Energy Talk and I promise I'll hit you back. And you, you're going to hear more of her. Thank you, my love. And I want to thank the listeners and the viewers for joining us today on Energy Talk Network. And this, this is Energy Talk radio show. And this was the Powerful Women segment. And if you didn't get anything out of this, I need you to replay, 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 because by the time you're done, you will get some out of this. Because this was an incredible conversation with this beautiful being, this beautiful being. And she has the right name, which is Urban Light, because she was a positive, a positive light. And, and she even gave me hope on this afternoon. So I want to extend, extend appreciation for you coming on here. Um, our beautiful, you know, you just, I read your bio and I was like, dang, she, she the bomb. <laughs> oh my God. When I got to the end, I said, then she served the country. Yeah. I was like, whoo. But no, you are amazing. And I just want to say thank you. And um, listeners, just remember, remember, go out to Linktree if you want to um, look at any upcoming events. If you want to know more about Energy Toss Network LLC, you just go on our Linktree and you can go under Energy Toss Network LLC. And if you would like to connect with me, like I said earlier, you can reach me on social media platform at Sunshine, that's S-U-N-S-H-Y-N-E. Anderson. So please. And like I said, also earlier, we need sponsorship. So if you can sponsor us, please do so. And if you would like to donate, it is dollar sign signs energy. I want to thank you all for joining us. And remember here at Energy Toss Radio Show, it is our culture, our love, our power. And just like today, we're going to continue to do it our way. I want to say thank you, everybody, for joining us. Love, peace, and just be happy. And thank you, Urban Light. Continue to shine bright. Bye. Thank you, my sister. Bye-bye.
Toss Radio. Radio. Awesome.